Hi, everybody. How's everybody today? Awesome. So, uh, as Mark was saying, we're going to kind of change things around today. You know, uh, kind of thinking out of the box as we started to prep the uh, two days ago. We we're basically like, all right, well, I'm doing tips and tricks. And then he was going to be talking about sweet and savory tarts, maybe as a potential new category uh, for next year. So a lot of things that I was going to be making was actually kind of finishing off things. But then while he was doing the main component, we're like, hey, well, wait a second. Why can't we kind of tag team this a little bit, give more information as possible we can for you guys over the next two hours? We will do a break, um, but we wanted to make sure that we can kind of show you, like I said, as much as we can. Um, we're going to do a little bit differently. Last year, we talked about doing questions at the end. Ah, forget about it. If we're changing things up already today, we might as well just change everything. So we want this to be extremely interactive with you guys. So it's very important. I think Mark's going to be walking around with a mic as well. So if you have a question as we're doing something on the large screen television, just stop us. Let's get your question because the next two hours is all about you guys and you guys trying to walk away with as much possible information as you can. So is that good? Sound good? Awesome. So we are going to have some fun though, first off, by kind of talking a little bit about what's going on in the world of, uh, of Duncan Hines. Um, and we're going to actually unveil something. It's actually in front of you, um, and you guys can sample as, as much as you want. But um, we're really excited for, for Duncan Hines this year. We're launching three new SKUs under the Comstock brand. But uh, is it okay if I walk around? I'm from Jersey. I pace. I'm talking to the camera guys, though. I know you guys are going to say yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we're going to go, uh, Daryl, let's, uh, let's go with um, video one. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go with... Um, we went to the American Pie Council last year. We went to the fields, the, the apple fields and the cherry fields for Comstock. And we wanted to share with you guys and show you the process of how the, the fruit filling is made. And then we're going to go through a, a little bit of a tasting for you guys today. So, Gary Huntsberger, um, tart cherry farmer here in Michigan. I deliver my cherries to uh, Duncan Hines, Comstock Wilderness. I'm second generation. We're farming uh, the two farms, roughly 100 acres of fruit. Michigan is probably the leader of the nation of cherries. Cherries are Montmorency's, white meat clear juice. They're a tart cherry, but they're fairly sweet. From this farm to your table, Duncan Hines Comstock Cherries. So, as you saw, that was a quick 30 second video, but it's really interesting. And, and what has happened is you know, when we harvest the cherries, you saw that's a really cool machine. Actually, they let me drive it, which was awesome. Uh, actually, they let me drive a little bit because apparently it's like a quarter of a million dollars and they didn't really want me to drive it. So, uh, but, uh, so I got on there and the, the tarp comes around, as you saw, and it shakes the cherries. It's really cool. So from that point to the moment that the cherries get um, uh, pitted, they actually travel via water. So the fruit doesn't get damaged. So it's really interesting. So you have these 18-wheeler uh, tankers that are actually just filled with water, and the cherries get transported. And this is about a mile and a half from our plant. So our plant is located right there in the heart of, of um, the Fruit Belt of America in Michigan. And uh, so they travel via water, and then they go right through the pitter. And so you can see, really, it, it's, it's an amazing process. Um, but then what's also cool, too, is, is um, our apples. And we actually um, work with a family, the, the Crane family, and that's actually three generations um, that we've been getting apples uh, for, for Comstock. So we're going to roll um, video two just so you guys can kind of see the, the process of how we do the, uh, the apples as well. Roll video two. <laughs> How did I get into it? I'm born in it. <laughs> well, my, my dad was a fruit farmer. His, his dad was, his grandfather was, so it goes back seven generations. Apples grown here in Fenville, I think we're in a real unique spot, you know, four miles off the big lake, the lake protects us, and I just think uh, my, his ancestors and, and really set us up really well in a great spot for great raising quality flavor in our fruit. Well, I feel Ida Reds is by far the best apple for pies. It's the size is right, the quality is good, the flavor is good. All around wonderful apple. Well, we have about 100 acres of, of apples here, and what we love about harvesting apples is coming up with a great product, quality product, at harvest time. We're not the first generation or second generation. We're, we're going to be the sixth, and there's a lot to pass on. 
and what I've always tried to instill on them too is is we want to leave the land better when we pass pass it on to the next generation. Every generation tries to make it better for the one coming up. Um, I would say the, the most we're looking forward to is just continuing doing what they did and just continuing the generations before that. Um, grow good quality fruit and keep on making you know families happy with the fruit we have and you know just continue on. From this farm to your table, Duncan Hines Comstock Wilderness. It's kind of cool, huh? So it was like a kid in a candy factory. So when we went there and we brought the American Pie Council there, uh, it was just a great opportunity to see. It was the first time I was ever at, I mean, I've been to apple orchards, uh, but nothing at, at, this, at this volume. So it was really, really a great opportunity. But I just wanted to share that with you. And also these videos are on the website that if you wanted to actually spend time and see it and slow it down and see the process, specifically with the cherries. Because we actually produce about, I believe it's about 18 million pounds over like a five-week process. It's 24-7 of the cherries. So, so yeah. Uh, the cherries are from Michigan, yeah. So you're Michigan, right? Oh, uh, Michigan, there you go. Oh, that's awesome. Glad to hear that. I can now sleep at night. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so that's great to hear. All right, so um, what I have right in front of you, you'll see this. There's three little cups, all right? And I have a little bit of a pie. Um, I basically made a pie dough and sheeted it out and then cut a little squares. But what we're excited, you guys are absolutely the first people, all right, to taste this product from a consumer standpoint. So we're really excited. So what we are launching, and it's going to be hitting in the retail shelves in about three weeks, Mr. Stevens? Mr. Stevens? Mark Stevens. Three weeks. About three weeks it's hitting the retail shelf? Two weeks. We're launching Duncan Hines. Simply fruit. So it's a clean label. So it's literally six ingredients that are in the pie filling. There is no artificial coloring. There is no artificial flavors. It is literally just, as you can see, and you guys get to take this home with you. So you guys are the first consumers to actually get this. So I, we have strawberry, cherry, and blueberry, and they're right in front of you now. So if you'd like to try to sample some of them and tell us what you're thinking, and we're going to start to get going a little bit. What do you need? Oh, OK. Which one? Cherry? Let's do blueberry. All right. So um, you can see now a couple of things I want to talk about. You'll notice the strawberry, right? And this is really important. So you know, there, there's two different types of consumers when we're looking at Duncan Hines Comstock, OK? Well, we want to look at the, 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 the consumers that kind of are looking at this, the, the millennials, want new cleaner flavors, that's the, the health and wellness that's going around it. Um, so when you look at the strawberry, you might say, oh, this is what I'm not used to, okay, because of that bright coloring that we have in the flavor, in the, uh, the can of the filling. So, but what happens is, right, all the coloring that you're seeing in front of you is coming literally from naturally from the fruit. So it might, the fruit might look a little bit more white than you're typically used to when you look at a, at a, a strawberry can filling, but that's because that fruit kind of travels from the, the strawberry over into the, we'll say, the, the slurry, okay? Um, or the, uh, the filling part of it. But you can see it's a nice, very refreshing flavor, very, you know, for better terms, clean. I'm sorry? It's not gummy. It's not gummy, see? I mean, so, so we're excited to share that with you today. And like I said, nobody else, the only people that have really seen this is, is the retailers, the ones that are taking it into their, their markets. So you guys are the first consumers. So the only thing I'm going to ask is, um, I think we have enough for, for two cans for everybody. Um, so we're going to kind of manage it when, once we're done with the demonstrations. So we'll wait. I know we're going to go on break a little bit later, but let's wait till the very end. So I just want to make sure that everybody that's here has the opportunity to take it home and, and have fun with it and, and make a pie. So, all right? Awesome. So moving along. I'm going to start over to you now. I'm going to move it over to. Um, all right, so I know he's introduced as James. I can't call him James. I call him Jimmy. Um, so I've been doing it for that, calling him Jimmy now for like 15 years. So, but Jimmy's going to start off and, and kind of go in with the, the tart aspect um, of his demo. And then we're going to kind of tag team, go back and forth. And you'll see some other products on your, um, on your, uh, in front of you. We're going to do a little bit of a chocolate tasting. We're going to talk about couverture versus coating chocolate. Um, then we're going to, later on, you're going to have some chocolate mousse as well. 
Um, so kind of sit back, ask as many possible questions as you can, and, and uh, like I said, this is going to be fun. So let's just have some fun today and learn. That's it. So like Joe was saying, we're, there's going to be a lot of information coming out today. And please, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, just yell it out. Um, you know, some of the subjects we're going to touch on, um, gelatins and the different types that I use or Joe may sometimes use, um, curvatures and chocolates, um, and of course my main demonstration of tarts. So, um, Brandon? Oh, there he is. Um, so I want to introduce Brandon with Salsa Tomorrow. So he's sponsoring the demonstration for me. Um, take a look at the stuff that they have. As professionals, I use a lot of their products. Where's my feedback coming from? Um, I, I use a lot of their molds for different things that I do. Um, it's easier, more convenient, and you'll see that you can create different shapes and textures by using the molds. So some of the other stuff that's more readily available, um, and I'm sure you guys have seen, where's the other ones? The silpouts. So everybody uses uh, flour to roll out their tart doughs and to um, do different things on their countertops. This is a great option to, or alternative to flour. Um, you may be needed to use a little bit less, but they're basically nonstick. Um, the ones Joe's opening up right now are actually for baking. Can the roll pat be used for baking also? Yeah. yeah. So you can actually just roll things right out on it and throw it in the oven if you'd like. Um, they come in different sizes. Uh, this is the actual, this is the one you probably see most often in stores like Sur La Table or Michael's. It's the Sil Pat. Um, so different other shape molds, and this is where I'm going to, we're going to have some fun today. So as Joe and I were talking as we were prepping the other day, um, it was around midnight. Yeah, midnight, one in the morning, and we're <laughs> talking and we're like, well, what if we combine our two demos? Because Joe's demo was basically tips and tricks and ideas of how to do things. And then mine was the tarts. And we're like, well, what if we combine the two and just make one big giant demo and use the products that or items that I'm going to make and use them for some of his tips and tricks. So um, some neat stuff coming. We're going to have a lot of fun. So but let's see. First, I'm going to start with my tart dough. Ah. So what's great about these molds is Jim's getting started, you know, like there you go up to 500, up to like 500 degrees Fahrenheit and as low as like minus 40 degrees. So you can do almost anything in it. I know we're concentrating on tarts, but as you think about it, like this is just the medium. You can be very um, flexible and be very creative uh, in what you're doing. So that's what part of this is about too, is as we look at new categories and as we grow the, the National Pie Championship and, and as we evolve into new and exciting things as the world of pastry is evolving, this could you know, be a great unlock to being very creative. Um, Molds are, are really the pastry chef's best friends. Uh, the freezer is the best oh, yeah. friend yeah. as well uh, because it allows you guys to, to be able to be very creative. So um, I've got a lot of these. Yes? So for the people that didn't hear that, I can, I can say it louder. Um, and it's not because I'm from Jersey. Um, but um, the, the question was, uh, if you didn't hear it, you know, where can we get it right now? So towards the end of this year, they're going to be available for cons you know, um, traditional consumers to, to purchase. Uh, right now they are for um, pastry chefs. But what I would do is you know, even grab a catalog, look at their website as well, start to generate ideas. Because I know you guys are generating ideas, even though you just handed in your pies. I know for a fact you guys are already thinking about next year, right? Who started thinking about next year already? Yeah, I know you guys. I, he's not raising his hand. I know he's got his little book. You still got your little book, John? You got your little book back there? No? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, and that's what the whole point of this. This demo is to help you guys start to generate some new and crazy things that will help you for next year. So, That's really the key. I think we do. Uh, 
a lot of pre-planning. So run with it. Um, but I will say, and to where you can get them, most professional only uh, suppliers, basically now with the internet and the websites, you can go onto their websites and order whatever you want. Um, I've, you know, yes? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. 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 It'll the first get, the first time <laughs> you use the well first is yeah always wash something before you use it. Um, biggest thing is no harsh chemicals. That's that's the amazing part of this is and you'll see um, the things that I've done. It doesn't take any pan spray. If you spray them with like Pam or Pan Release it'll actually destroy them. Like their whole purpose is they're 100% non-stick. They, you know, you can literally just wipe them out with a uh, soft sponge and they're clean. And if you take care so, of them the right way, like Jim was saying, um, I mean, I have some that are like, I'm not gonna age myself here, but like 15, yeah, over 15 years old. And I got them in a nice little Rubbermaid container down in the basement. So whenever I need them, I just go down there and they're all stacked nicely. So you can maintain them. You know, don't obviously go to knives or anything like that, but you can see, I mean, like, this is for, like, a sponge cake, right? And they just pop right out. It's really easy, so. But they're very universal to use for different things, and that's part of what I'm doing. I need flour for the top of the dough, I forgot. Yeah. So he's got um, some tart dough right here. Um, mm -mm. All right, so basically a, a tart dough is, is a, uh, I, I, gotta, I feel like I'm, I got a pace. Uh, yeah. So, uh, tarto basically, you have uh, uh, butter in it, uh, sugar, um, you have a fat, uh, butter, um, you can do sometimes different types of, of um, flours. So if you wanted to make like a basic patsukrai or a sugar dough, um, you can use a blend of like cake flour to keep it tender. Um, sometimes you can use a blend of nut flours to give a little bit of uh, added texture to it as well. Um, so. And this is going to be the base for uh, a really cool dessert that we're going to do plated. Yeah. So like Jim was saying earlier, we're going to have some fun, create the main component, and then we're going to have some fun with plating desserts because that's one category. I don't know if Linda's still in here. I want to try to see for maybe next year, have as a, as a category where you guys make finished pies, but could you also take your, your pie slice and create a plated dessert out of it? Oh, someone's excited back there. Yes. Um, <laughs> So we're going to show you decorations later on and, and plate design. We kind of talked about that last year. Yeah, um, so as bit. we started talking about it, we're like, how can that be another category where instead of just bringing a whole pie and dropping it off, can we actually have a dessert where it's got three components, a sauce, a garnish, maybe it's an ice cream, a sorbet that accompanies the pie slice. So, so. What is your here? What is mine? Butter, sugar. I will actually give you the recipe. It's in my phone. Um, Butter, sugar, hazelnut flour, cake flour, vanilla, and egg yolks. So, um, so this is their mini bunt cake mold. So everybody loves bunt cakes, right? Sure. Um, so what I did, part of being a pastry chef is creativity and changing things from what they are. So I was playing around with this at work um, in my not free time, and I realized if I actually take them and I push the center down, because I you know, wanted to say, okay, I'm you can use a tarto, but I can't use a tarto with this sticking all the way up because it's gonna tear the dough. So what I did was I actually pushed it through, if you can see that really well. Yeah, so I pushed it through and then pushed it back up and then it became shallow. So, but I can still get the indentation in the top that I was looking for to have a bunt style product. So, basically easy. My paring knife. And I use that one. So I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. Hopefully this works. So just same as you would do for a normal tart. Just work it down, can you see? Yeah. Just work it down in there. Joe, can I have the blueberry filling? 
carbon and a spoon. Question in the back. No. Nope. No spraying. No, no spraying. Necessary. Spraying will actually ruin them and take away their non-stick factor. Um, okay. So I'm gonna shoot. Yes, with detergent. Very neutral soap is the answer. I'll tell you right now, I don't put them in the dishwasher. No. I wash them by hand. They're very sensitive with, with the tools and equipment. Yeah. And they last years. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have, I mean, we have ones at the hotel that were there before I got there. I got there five years ago. So, and they still look brand new. So, um, so we can see into the inside. So I still have the indentation in there and it's, it's the pretty good. Right here, just so you know. It's that one? Uh -huh. There we go. So. I know, I just got in trouble for leaving the cube. Uh oh. So, I'm going to use some of this amazing Simply Blueberry pie filling. <laughs> Do you want to all know the Joe and Jim story? <laughs> no. Because it's pretty funny. <laughs> so. Get it in there, work it around to the edges. Thank you, sir. So, and then there's multiple ways we could do this. I could either cut out another circle and place that circle on top and seal it, or we can just fold it over. Oh, a toy? Whoa, look nice. at that. Awesome, thank you, Mark. Mine doesn't sell anything. Butter and eggs. And that's it. Nope. No liquid. It's like well, a here's, a, here's a pastry. It's like a, cookie, it's like a cookie dough. Yeah. Think about it like that. It's like a cookie dough. It's basically, it's almost a sugar cookie. Huh. Uh, to an extent. <laughs> Nothing. No liquid. No water. Only the liquid to drink when you're baking. <laughs> As the past three nights. No. We've, um, it was actually really cool being able to, you know, we were in the villa and, you know, it was nice to be able to just do the prep and hang out and have some fun and um, a little bit less stressful than trying to transport everything from Georgia down to here. So, anybody from Georgia? Nobody? Wow. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this around just so you guys can see. So Joe's uh, pass around the finished product, what this actually looks like when it comes out. Yeah. Um, so what we've done is we, we have a lot of these products already done because you need to, you know, for the sake of the demo. So we're gonna show you how to prepare and then as you're preparing, we'll pass around and show you guys well, the finishing. actual finished product so you can actually see it, okay? And then during the actual demo, you'll be sampling some more other, more other items. Your time you 350? Yeah. The, the, the great thing, especially, this is, what's, what's the name of the line that these are in? Flexi Pat. Um, they're a little bit different. So Fle Flexi Pat. Is this on? Can you guys hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah. it's got to be higher. I think it's sliding down. Um, it's Flexi Pat. I'm going to. No. No. No, that's, actually, that's... it's a great question. Yeah. Um, it'll actually stick and prevent it from yeah. actually. Um, popping out a little bit um, with the egg. If it's an egg wash? No, I don't think it'd prevent it from sticking, but it'll, it, I would be more Could concerned that it would burn. Um, and that is, and I'm actually gonna take this now and pop it out. 
Yeah. So I'm actually going to hand these out, even though I need them. And just be careful, this one has flour on it. So you can see the difference. This is their classic version. And you can see the fiberglass fibers through it that help keep it flexible and, but keep it sturdy. And then this one is their new one. Um, doesn't have any fiberglass in it, right? It's just silicone. So sorry that it's dirty. And you'll so. see that you're wondering how does these shapes tie into a tart, right? You're probably wondering that as you, as you pass them around. You'll see what that, the, the, the one that's the ring, yeah, that one right there, you'll actually see where when we finish a tart off, it's going to be used as a, as a decoration, as a garnish. Um, just to kind of make you guys think a little bit differently. That's the whole point of showing you these, the, the stuff, um, is to kind of be different. Right, because you want to so. be different as you compete. I mean, regardless of, um, regardless of how, uh, if it's an apple category or garnishing. I saw, I walked in there, I saw some people garnishing. Some similarities, but some people different, and that's where you want to be unique. Yes? Of course. Yes. So, I think it was just me talking on that one. Um, I just started basically talking about, the, as the molds come out, uh, why we, ch they look differently, because I can see the, their faces. Um, and they were a little puzzled on how we're going to make a tart out of this. Uh, so uh, basically, that was just about how you can use it as a decoration. Where's the um, Where's the mark? It's a mic. I don't know. Where do you go? I don't know. Anyway, all right. So, all right, you want to take over for a second? No, I can go get that stuff. I'll go get that stuff. You, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. get the. Oh, right. there's the mic. There you go. Oh, there it is. So, and then I want to. So I'm going to go in the guys. back and get all the, all the products that we've made. And he's going to go ahead and start um, Next. making some uh, of this stuff. I'm going to turn this off so you don't hear me swear as I drop something. And then he hear me swear that he did drop something. So I'll give you the recipe. Can you have my number? Sure, I don't care. Here, uh, here's my shameless self-promotion. Um, anybody on Twitter? So P Chef James Gallo. P is in pastry, but Chef James Gallo. You can tell him from Jersey too. I talk with my hands and I'm Italian. So No, it's on my phone. Um, but I will I'll give them out. Um, I can actually read them off, but worst case is um, my email address is james.gallo. Can you see that? There it is right there. At Hyatt.com. If you email me, I'll just email all the recipes. Um, I actually have probably, I'll say, 15 or 20 different tartos. That and we I can use. also post these on the uh, Pi Council site. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you want, like, tons of emails coming. Sure. So, all right, can you get a ganache going? What was that? Get a ganache going. Also, okay. So right now what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to make a ganache. A ganache is um, equal parts chocolate, um, chocolate or couverture plus heavy cream. As we're starting to get that going, I'm also going to talk about chocolate and, and uh, chocolate a little bit. And you'll have some samples in front of you. The samples starting from your left. Your left. Uh, maybe around like 11, 12 o'clock. You're going to have, we have several different chocolate manufacturers to kind of talk about chocolate or couverture. And, um, Coating chocolate. So the one that's uh, right in front of you on the left-hand side, it's from a supplier, Cocoa Berry, well-known supplier. It's a 58% uh, cocoa content. So does anybody know what I'm going to say? 58%. What? What does that mean? 58%. We have the microphone with Mark. So does anybody know what 58% means? So uh, what we do uh, in the world of chocolate is we classify chocolates by the amount of cocoa moss or chocolate liqueur that's in them. So when you get chocolate and you, you get a, a cocoa bean, you roast the cocoa bean, 
you take the shell off, and basically what's inside is what's referred to as the cocoa nib. That cocoa nib is really what chocolate really comes from. You take that, ch that cocoa nib and you crush it. And after you crush it, you get this like really thick liquid mass. And that's referred as either cocoa moss or chocolate liqueur. No alcohol. Um, so you take that chocolate liqueur and you press it. And when you press it, that dry solid that's left is cocoa powder. The liquid that comes out is the fat of chocolate, which is cocoa butter. All right? So as you then mix chocolate, you take the chocolate liqueur and other ingredients such as sugar, vanillin, vanilla, um, and uh, additional cocoa butter if you need it, uh, and you have chocolate. But the percentage of that chocolate liqueur is how we classify the chocolate. The higher the percentage, the bitter the chocolate is. So bitter to me, better. So I like those high 72s, 70% uh, uh, cocoa moss. We have a 58% for you, and you can sample away. Um, so it's almost like a semi-sweet. So if you go to the supermarket and you get a, a chocolate and it says semi-sweet, you're looking at 50%. It's halfway. It's semi-sweet, okay? Um, and then the one that is, um, the next one, next to that is by another manufacturer called Flecklin. And that one, the percentage is a... 65 60, what, 65? 65. It's a 65. So you can actually taste now the differences in the chocolates. Now when you work with chocolate, you have to figure out what your final product is. So if I'm making like, for instance, like a, a brownie where it's going to be heavily sweet, right? Uh, I'm going to use a more bitter chocolate to help balance it out, all right? Baking and pastry is an art and it's a science, okay? We're trying to make sure everything's all well balanced through textures, through flavors. Um, so as you look at the chocolate, you taste it. You'll see that the 58% sweet is a little bit on the 58% uh, is a little bit on the sweeter side um, versus the 65. You'll taste that. Sometimes you might get some floral notes, and it. it's similar to coffee. It's similar to wine. You'll get those some different types of uh, attributes. And then what's next to them is a white and another dark piece. But those are what's referred to as coating chocolates. Okay. And by the way, towards the end. Um, I don't know how we're going to do it. Maybe a little, you know, quiz. Um, but uh, we're going to keep giving all the stuff, um, the, the chocolate. We don't, we don't want to take anything back. <laughs> so uh, we'll be giving this stuff off to you guys. Uh, so we want, we want to always go back with less stuff. Um, so, um, so the coating chocolate, you see as you put it in your mouth, it kind of tastes a little bit different. All right? And the reason why is that it uses different types of fats. Um, so... The Kubitscher has a fat in it, like I said, the cocoa butter. It requires tempering, all right? And the tempering ba basically is the, the, it's the crystallization of the cocoa fat within it. And it gives you a nice um, snap, great mouthfeel to, to the chocolate. Well, with the coating chocolate, you know, it doesn't have the cocoa butter in it. It doesn't require it to be tempered. So I like working with, temp um, with the coating chocolate because I can do some quick decorations. I don't have to temper it. Tempering takes time. Tempering, once again, is, is an art. Um, so, um, but we wanted you to understand how it tastes um, and what the mouthfeel is about. So as you taste those different chocolates, the first two are more about the different level of cocoa moss that's in there or chocolate liqueur. You can see the bitterness, the sweetness. Um, and then the second two um, are more of just the mouthfeel um, and how they, um, the, the texture of the chocolate as it dissolves in your mouth. And, and once again, that does not require any uh, tempering of the um, of the fat crystals. So, you guys notice any difference? What's some of the uh, feedback um, so far? We're just raise your hand too if you have any feedback, so we can get the mic on, so then everybody can hear. No questions about it. Was it interesting? Could you tell the difference? Yeah. All right. Good. So that's one of the one of the most important things you can do as you start to try different things. It always constantly eat, all right? I eat everything, as you can see, all right? Um, but uh, you need to understand your product and understand the ingredients that you're working with. Extremely important. No matter if you start to change the flavor, you start to change even the textures of the product, you need to obviously practice. And we all know you guys practice, you know, you're probably starting, like I said, you're probably starting Monday uh, for next year, which is great. And you guys understand that. That's really important, so... Yeah. Why is it called coating chocolate? 
That's a great question. Typically, it's used uh, for things like dipping strawberries into. Um, coating. Yeah, for, for coating items. Uh, it's a little bit, if, if you eat the two, uh, like the 58 and the 65, you could tell they actually have a harder crunch to them. Um, that's tempered, and we can, we can get into tempering and have a six-hour conversation. So, but it's basically uh, breaking down the chocolate crystals right. and then bringing them back together. Um, anybody ever see those big show pieces they do on TV and all that? That's all tempered chocolate. Okay. So if you didn't temper the chocolate, it would never stand up the way it does. So you wouldn't be able to make the pretty flowers and all those kinds of things. And so. you can actually see that if you, I mean, that's why I put napkins down too, right? If you actually grab the chocolate, like exactly what uh, Jim was talking about, um, you can actually squeeze the coating chocolate and it's very soft and pliable. Whereas the tempered chocolate, which is the 58 and the 65, it has that snap that you want. So question over here. You can be the first person that uses the mic. Well, next to you, Mike. Make him run. Make him, yeah, make that's him run. another thing. Prizes to people that make Mark run the furthest. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a great question. His answer is going to be different than my answer, just so you know. What tools? All right. So, making chocolate curls. Well, maybe, maybe let's just make some chocolate curls today, huh? Maybe we can do that. Maybe we can make some chocolate curls, right? That's how, that's how flexible we're going to be. So, real quick, so the question is curls. Now, we can probably make it slightly, we'll do an ad lib with maybe the coating. We'll see our best to see how it can work. Um, but, um, yes, this is from a um, home hardware store, okay? Hardware store. Um, what else? Hardware store. I know I have more tools. My, my favorite supplier is Home Depot. Yeah. So any hardware store is um, a, great, a great source of inspiration for a pastry chef. So you can get PVC piping as well. Um, well, it's funny though, right? Before these guys even came out with these molds, like the molds that are over there, I used to use PVC piping for. So I'd go there for like $10, buy like a 10 foot long PVC piping and have them cut the rings for me. Now like rings are made, metal rings, we have the flexi pat rings, I mean it's amazing but I love going to like any hardware store and just looking and getting the tools and what can I use and apply it to pastry but I use these um, putty knives um, for tempering of chocolate so so we can we're gonna we're gonna do it yeah we're actually gonna do it um, so um, when we go to the decoration side when we work with all the chocolates we'll just make some curls yeah. That's how flexible we're. Why not, right? Hey, we're, hey when in Florida. You guys, you, you guys are going to dictate what we do today. So. Yeah. Um, we have some ideas of what we're going to do, but if there's something that you want to see that you've wondered how, we'll do it for you. If we can do it, we'll do it for you. Mark, right over here, we got some questions. If you actually just, I'm sorry, just hold up for the mic just so everybody can hear. Me personally, water bath. The reason for that is the steam gets into the chocolate. I'm very careful when I work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I like the water bath. You want to know why? I can, I can walk away. So like what I do is um, because, you know, marketing keeps me busy at work. Well, he's not even here. <laughs> oh. I'll wait till I get him. Uh, so what I do is um, generally... Rule of thumb is, you know, bring your water, about an inch of water to a boil. I put the bowl on top, I turn off the heat, and then I walk away. And I come back 10, 15 minutes later, I, I have 75% of my, my chocolate's melted. I do a quick little stir, I have my, my chocolate ready. So I don't have to worry generally. But you'll see, like, the great thing about it is, like, two different people, two different ways of doing anything. Nothing is wrong with his way, nothing is wrong with my way. You know, he's got, he's busier, different type of busy than I am. So for me, like I can walk away and, and I might not get back to it for like an hour, an hour and a half if I have to head to a meeting, you know, so, um, but it's just, it's just easier that way. Um, 
and then for me, I mean, the microwave, you just got to be careful that if you are, are using the stainless steel, that it doesn't hit the sides of the microwave. Um, so, great question. And then actually, going back to the curl question, too, um, depends on, like you're saying, what type of chocolate. It, it varies. You know, what chocolate do I like? You know, you know, you guys might like white chocolate, you might like sweeter chocolates, you might like milk chocolates, you might like dark chocolates. It's really what the application you're using it for. So brownies, I started answering it before, brownies will actually use, you can use more of the baking, like the chocolate liqueur, unsweetened chocolate, um, because you have, brownies are heavily, you know, with sugar um, as an ingredient. If I'm doing any type of mousses uh, or any type of confections, um, I use a bitter chocolate because remember, the higher the percentage of the cocoa, the more the money the, uh, the chocolate is as well. So I'm not going to use something I'm going to bake with and use like a 72% chocolate and bake in it uh, because I'd rather use that for something where I'm going to be using like a, as a confection or maybe even like a ganache, uh, more as a finishing. So it always depends on what your, your application is that will depend on what type of chocolate you'll use. And I always scale, when I scale chocolate, I always scale extra because I always end up um, nibbling. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I know someone else I, I saw had a hand up over here. Yes. Are we still having problems with my mic? You guys hear me? Yeah, it's because I'm from Jersey. I don't need a mic. Yeah. I'm sorry? Absolutely. No chocolate? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it all depends on your application. It, yeah. It's the, as Joe was saying, that, that pastry is really just a lot of science. A lot of it, a lot of what we do is flavor profiles. So if I have, let's say, well, I'll use prime example. I have passion fruit. Passion fruit's a very acidic ingredient. Lemon. <laughs> raspberries. You chocolates have different levels of acidity as well. So if the chocolate is a high acid, like the 65 is a high acidity of chocolate, I'm not going to combine that with a acidic ingredient. So there I may use the milk chocolate. It helps to smooth out the tartness of the passion fruit or lemon. Uh, you know, and the acidity usually is highest in the 60 range when it comes to percentages. And then in 70s, it balances out a little bit. And then once you get up in the 80s, 88s, 90s, it's back to acidic again. So Peanut it really but just depends. Yeah. It depends on personal flavor for your, your personal preference. Um, you know, I may like bananas with dark chocolate, but you may like them with milk chocolate. There's no, that's the whole thing. You're never wrong. There's no wrong answer on anything. So just um, to make sure it's balanced. That's very key, you know. Um, make sure the flavors complement each other. It's a little bit of R and D behind it, right? I mean, you guys spend how much time making these pies? You don't like present a, a pie and for the first time you're making it now. Um, you practice, right? Same thing with flavors. You guys are we're not different than you guys. I mean, we just do this like, yeah, we're crazy in the head, I guess. But you guys are just as crazy, I think, right? Because uh, I, I tell everybody about you guys at work. I'm like, these guys aren't amateurs at all, you know? I, mean, I don't know why we call it the amateur division. Uh, you guys are like hardcore bakers, you know, extremely passionate about what you do. And uh, it's exciting. But you have to spend time to work on the flavor development and the textures and how they work together. You know, you will make mistakes, right? You've made mistakes, right? We all make mistakes, right? But the most important thing about, and that's what's great about competitions, it's really not about today. Today is about your journey to get here, right? You might have learned something new about how you do your pie three months ago that is making you successful for today. So very important to practice, 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 and learn from your mistakes. I can tell you right now, I know we both have over 20 plus years of, of professionally doing pastry and baking, there's plenty of mistakes that we've made and we learn, you know? So it's very important that, to understand that. So as you start looking at those flavor profiles, um, I mean, I know a lot of people that love dark chocolate and peanut butter. The pastry chef inside of me says milk chocolate, peanut butter. It, that's just me. Um, 
but who's to say that dark chocolate and peanut butter is not what is perfect for you because you might have another flavor profile in there that might complement both the peanut butter and the dark chocolate. So it's very important to understand that. So, but don't go too crazy with flavors too. I see that all the time, not just here, but other pastry competitions and just other pastry chefs. You know, I don't want to see like 15 flavors in one thing. Don't go crazy, okay? Um, remember, keep it simple. Simple and sexy, all right? Maybe four to five flavors that are really going to be out there. So when I taste that cherry, you know, cherry tropical pie, I'm getting the notes of cherries and I'm getting mangoes and I'm getting ma um, pineapple and maybe a little bit of guava. But you want them to work well together. The more flavors and complexity you add, the craziness it gets and it confuses people. What am I eating? I don't know what I'm eating anymore. So just keep that in mind. You no, know, in that, you know, if you say, okay, I'm going to make a tropical dessert. I should unmold this real quick. I'm going to do it in one second. Okay. Um, mango, passion fruit, pineapple, guava, coconut. I mean, that's five flavors that will literally just become one. So you almost want to layer, and I know this sounds weird, and I'm not talking layer structure-wise, but flavor-wise, you actually want the desserts to be layered or your pies to be layered so that you taste the individual flavors as well as tasting them all together. So, and it's all in construction and components and everything. So, um, really quick, I wanna get this done. So, here again, I have my little ring mold. Um, this is, uh, as we were playing, it's gonna pop out on me. As we were playing around, I actually took um, some of the cherry filling and now we can go with that. So the gelatin. The gelatin. Yeah. So actually, yeah, both and the sheets. Do you want me to pop it out? Yeah. Um, so basically what we do is fill them really fast. So, but what's going to come around right now is uh, gelatin. So everybody knows what granulated gelatin is. So unfortunately, pastry chefs are complicated and we don't do things just one way. So what's coming is two other forms of gelatin that we use. The gelatin in the little cup is instant gelatin. So I can take it, add it to something, and it's gonna set. The other one is sheet gelatin, which a lot more people are, are starting to hear about, and that you have to bloom in water it's six times its weight, and those sheets weigh two grams each. Um, so you'd have to bloom it in 12 grams of water. And again, it's, it's starting, things are starting to become more available in stores like Sur La Table and William Sonoma, and I think you can actually find leaf gelatin there now. So, and it all depends on the application. I can use instant gelatin with fruit puree and put it in an immersion blender, and it becomes a sauce instead of having to cook it and thicken it with cornstarch and everything else, and then you're losing flavor. So, so I filled my one mold, and you can put it right on top of here. Oh, you want it right on top? Okay. Um, so, real quick, let me, yeah. Yeah. So it was Joe's unmolding. So in this flexi pan, I have a tart, and a very big one, and Filled it up with some fillings, different fillings, and I'm using the ring mold as our garnish. This is what Joe was saying, was we're going to use it as a garnish. So we can put, the, put them all in. Oh, yeah. there you go. So basically, we're going to take up some space on the top with some really bright, vibrant color, and then we'll add some fresh fruit and things like that for the whole plating that Joe's going to do. So hey, then I have. Go ahead. Animal based, yes. Are you familiar with using the dark or what are some other options that you Yeah. Apple pectin or pectin, there, there's so many different types of pectins available professionally now. Um, but apple pectin, agar, uh, what's the other one? Guar gum. We can use a little bit of gum too. Yeah, the guar gums, things like that. If it's being boiled, those things are great. Uh, at the same time, when you boil things, you lose flavor. There is 
a company, and I will find out by the end of this demo, there is a company now that's starting to sell gelatins that are vegetable-based or plant-based. And I will get that for you. I will let you know who it is. So, so uh, I'm going to fill up the second mold really fast. And I actually, and this is our bunt mold again. So again, I'm not just using it to make little mini bunt cakes. I'm doing different things. So I filled the tart here with some mousse. Here's some that are actually pre-done already. Give me this all. Yep. So all we have to do, where are we at? That one. So Which one? just pop it straight up. This one? No, I got it. No. And I'll lay it down. Yeah. Yes. It's frozen. So. So again, we're gonna finish this one in a little bit. You're not smooth it out, John. What's that? So. You're not smooth it out. No. They're done. So. All right. All right. So I'm gonna. Well, I don't know if it's. Uh, Maybe instead of passing it out, we'll leave it up here for now, so you can see, because I don't want to get damaged too much. Um, so, next item. Okay, so this is another one of their cake pans. And again, I say things are universal. You just use them for whatever. Um, so I put a little tart shell on the bottom. I put the dough in there, weighed it down. So I just want to put oh, a little bit of ganache in there. So I'm going to put a little ganache in here. And I'm just going to let it set. Thank you, sir. All right. Once again, the ganache is equal parts chocolate to heavy, uh, heavy cream. Heavy cream, depending on the percentage. And that's for a dark, yeah. dark chocolate. So, so we're going to let this set. We're ready to take a break. Yeah, so what we're going to do is because now we've shown you the components, we're going to take a quick little break. We're going to put, get this set. We'll come back and we're going to show you different ways how you can finish things up using pie dough, uh, different decorations with pie dough. We're going to show you some chocolate work. We're going to show you um, how to plate a new technique. So remember last year I talked about piping on plates. We're going to show you how to actually do some designs using meringue as the medium instead of chocolate on a plate for decorations.